How's it going guys? Ace Deuce Buckeye. I need to make these vids shorter because this is the third time making this vid and I still haven't got it under two, under ten minutes. My first one was 10.01 and I was pissed. This last one was 11.50. I'll try and shorten it up. So let's get started. Alright, Jason Campbell, gonna have a good season. Breakout year. Why? Jim Zorn, quarterback's coach for Seattle. He's gonna get it done. He's gonna have to learn another offense, but I believe he'll get the job done. He's gonna have mistakes at first because uh, he's learning a new offense, and when you're learning a new offense, you're going to make mistakes. Okay? That's simple. But I believe him. He'll have a great, great season. Breakout year for Jason Campbell. Can't wait to see what he can do. Now, CP, my boy, Clinton Portis, my favorite player on the skins, is going to have an amazing year. Rush for over 1,500 yards again. I guarantee it. Now, if we need to give him a rest, Get some fresh legs in there. Liddell Betts get the job done. Okay? I believe he's a solid, solid backup. And he's proven through last year and through this year's preseason that he is a solid back. He is durable. And he can, he can really do his thing in this league. He can get the job done as a great backup. Then you got Rock Cartwright if we need to give Betts a break or Portis another break. We got them. He is a proven good back as well. I'm stacked, we're stacked at uh, running back, and I'm very excited about it. Now on to tight end. Obviously, Chris Cooley, stud delicious, Dude is phenomenal, okay? Then you got Fred Davis, great running back there. All right. So, I think we're stacked at tight end. Um, then a wide receiver. Obviously, we got the speed demons in Santana Moss and Antoine Randall. They can beat you deep on the go route. If you're not careful, watch out for them burning you deep over the top. Campbell the most. Oh, yeah. It's going to happen a lot this season, okay? So they're short. They're the speedy, agile, wide receivers. Then we got Devin Thomas from just up the road in MSU, 6'3". Then Malcolm Kelly all the way down to Oklahoma drafted him this year. He's 6'5". Huge targets. Means huge wingspan, means lots of catches. Now, I think in order um, for the offense to be a little bit productive, these guys have to produce at least 30 to 50 yards per game. Not every single one, just one per game. Either Kelly, Davis, or Thomas. You have to get between 30 and 50 yards receiving. And I think if they can do that, mix in with Randall L. and Moss and Cooley and Davis. And Portis, we're going to have a spectacular offense. I predict top 15 in the, in the league. Now, moving to the old line. Oh. Worst group on the entire Redskins team. The guys are old. John Jansen needs to freaking retire. He needs to hang his cup up, all right? Dude, it's too old. We need some young studs to come in and get the job done. The offensive line is the key to the offense, and it's the key to every, every offense. And anyone who disagrees doesn't know jack crap about football, okay? If your offensive line cannot open up holes for the running back to run through, you will not have a running game, obviously. If you cannot protect your quarterback and you can't open up holes for your running back, your offense is going to suck. An offensive success is only as good as, uh, as its offensive line. All right? Keep that in mind. Now let's go to defense. Defensive line just as important as the offensive line is for the offense that the D line is for the defense, okay? You got to put pressure on quarterbacks. You got to flush them. You got to get in their head. You got to hit them. You got to make them remember, remember you. You got to trash talk. Talk trash. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, that's what you got to do. You got to get in the mind of the quarterback and make him think you're coming even when you're not. And the only way you can do that is to get pressure. And Jason Taylor will be the guy to do that. Philip Danis got injured, unfortunately. I'm sorry. But, hey, we got Jason Taylor. He'll be all right for another one or two years. Now, moving on to linebackers. London Fletcher, obviously a stud. Marcus Washington, obvious, obviously a stud. I think they're one of the best linebacking cores in the NFC East. The best. If not the best in the NFC as a whole. So, not much else to say about that because they're studs. They speak for themselves, okay? 
Then you got the secondary. We lost our boy Taylor last year, last year to a tragedy, but we got Carlos Rogers, LaRon Landry, and my boy Sean Springs from the Ohio State University getting it done in the NFL. Woo! He has been proven throughout his whole career that he can get it done. Okay? Studs all over the secondary. I expect the secondary, secondary and the linebacking unit to be among the top five in the NFL in, in yardage allowed for entire defense. Obviously, passing yards not going to get too much against our secondary. As a whole unit, defense is going to be great. I expect top ten because we pay them enough money, too much money, for them to not be in the top five, top ten. Okay. Now, let's look at the season schedule, shall we? We open the open the NFL season tomorrow night versus the New York Giants. Seven o'clock. Whole nation will be watching. Okay. Now, it's in the Meadowlands, so I give the edge to New York. Losing game one, unfortunately, but it'll be a close one. The Giants squeak one out over the skins. Then New Orleans and Washington. New Orleans had a bad offseason. Washington's had a good one, with the exception of Philip Daniels. They get the win. And I'm sorry about uh, Hurricane Gustav for them. It's a horrible thing. There's going to be a lot of distractions there as well. I'm praying for that city. Then you got Washington and Arizona. I believe Bolden and Fitzgerald will be shut down by Rodgers, okay, and Landry and Springs, and they won't get much through the air. They don't even know who the quarterback is. Matt Liner, Kurt Warner, they don't know. Neither does the rest of the nation. So, 2-1. and one. Then we got Dallas in the first epic game in the Washington-Dallas rivalry this season. Week 4. It's a lot earlier. It doesn't, doesn't quite feel right. It's in September. We're already in September. It's not too far away, guys. Because it's in Dallas, and because of the huge rivalry, because of the fan base that will be there, I give Dallas the edge. We'll go 2-2, two two, rough start, but it gets much, much better. Hold on. We go to Philly, beat a horrendous Philly team, okay? Then we got St. Louis. They are horrible. Going 4-2. Then we got Cleveland at home. I believe Cleveland is going to take a step back. Derek Anderson had a magical season last year. He won't this year. Um, I believe Braylon Edwards will have a good year. But as a year overall, Derek Anderson will not have a good one. So, get the win. 5-2. and two. Then we go to Detroit right up the street. All right. I will be in attendance at that game. Skins obviously knock the poop out of the Detroit Lions and go to 6-2. and two. Then we got Pittsburgh at home. That's going to be a dog fight on ESPN. I can't wait for that one. It's going to be a fight. Ooh, it's going to be good. I give it to the Skins, though. It's a slight advantage, and they get the job done. 7-2, and two, then we have a bye week. Then it's Dallas time again. It's back in FedEx Field. We win. We knock our rival to the ground, and we win again, even in the series for, uh, for the season at 1-1. Then we got Seattle, Jim Thorne's old team. They're going to win. Seattle's not that good. It's at Seattle, so it gives them a little bit of an edge, but the Redskins will take it. We got the Giants again. Back at home this time. Get the dub. Washington, Baltimore. I hope my boy Troy Smith is playing quarterback for that game. I really do, but they have a lot of issues at quarterback. Bowler just went down. It's between Flacco and Smith for a starting job. We'll see who wins it, but it's obviously going to be the Redskins in the game. Then you go to Cincy. This is a toss-up game. I'm going to give it to Cincy just because I don't see Washington going 14-2 and two this season. We got Philly back at home. The dub! Knock it up. Then San Francisco to close out the season. We go 13-3. and three. Close it out with a win. We make the playoffs. Tied, for the, tied with the Cowboys for the NFC, NFC East Championship. I got to go. I don't want to go overtime. I'll see you later. Later. Ace Buckeye. I'm out.